Hey guys, this is Stetson with Socially Stetson. Thank you so much for joining me for my first ever hunting for hashtags. So excited you're here. Thank you for trusting me with your social media knowledge. Let's get started. Today, I'm going to talk to you about six key pieces of the component for searching for those hashtags because it's one of the questions that I get not only asked a lot, but I see a lot of people doing it the wrong way. And so maybe you're already using hashtags, maybe you're not. It's one of those key components of Instagram that just kind of make the cake work. If you've taken any of my other trainings, you know that I like to bake the cake of Instagram to have that perfect feed. And so hashtags are a really key ingredient for how to do that. So let's go ahead and dive in in our hunting for hashtags. Okay, so number one, what are hashtags? If you are brand new to the Instagram game, a hashtag Hashtag, that always makes me think of Jimmy Fallon and Justin Timberlake. Hashtag is the pound sign, you know, at the bottom of a phone, pound sign. So that is what you put in front of a word that you want people to use to discover your post. And so maybe you don't have a business page, maybe you are just a personal page. If you're not really looking for other people to find your post, or stumble across your page, you don't necessarily need to be using hashtags, but you can create personal hashtags. So let's say you just had a baby or you're about to get married. A lot of people use specific hashtags for their wedding. So when people post pictures of their wedding, they can use that specific hashtag that nobody else has, that word that when they go to look at that hashtag on Instagram or Facebook, even YouTube, people can search and everybody who is at that wedding who used that specific hashtag is gonna be able to find pictures of the wedding. My sister has three boys and so I, whenever I post pictures of my nephews, I like to use that hashtag. So one of the first hashtags is O Chambers. So my first nephew's name is Chamberlain and he had a very unique name and so a hashtag was O Chambers. And so we use that hashtag anytime we post a picture of him and so that way, hopefully, if Instagram is still here 20 years from now, he can scroll through and see all the pictures that we took of him on social media. It's kind of fun to use. And so if you don't have a business account, that is one reason that you might want to use hashtags. On the other hand, if you do have a business, this is just a key part of marketing, getting discovered, having people come to your page, because if you own a business, the whole purpose is to gain new customers and paying clients from the gram. And hashtags are a really good way to do that. I am gonna show you a picture right here on my phone. This is an example of how many people found my post through hashtags. Hello, that's a huge number. And so I just like to use that as an example. And when my clients work with me one-on-one -on -one or in my group settings, a lot of times we look at the analytics, we look at what's doing well, and we specifically go through the hashtags that are working for them and which ones might not be working for them. So that kind of leads me into point two, which is why are they important? Well, they're a huge way to get discovered, like I just said. And so if you're new to the game and you're just using a broad range of hashtags, you're definitely doing them wrong. And it could be hurting your engagement more than it's helping you. So point number three, how many hashtags should I be using? Instagram lets you use 30 hashtags. I'm not sure how many Facebook allows I don't know. TikTok only allows a few just because of their character space, but Instagram, which is the main hashtag platform, I would say, allows 30. And guess what? You need to be using all 30. And I'm gonna tell you why. So if you're only using 10, those might not be the best ones for you. If you're using 30 and you're using kind of the hashtag formula that I'm gonna give you, then that is just opening the door for more people to be able to find your page, find your business, find out who you are and what you're about. 
absolutely use all 30. A lot of people do it, it's not considered tacky. You can space down from your captions to add the hashtags, or you can even be the first person to comment on your post, which is my favorite way to do it, and have the 30 hashtags right there. And then a lot of times when other people start commenting, it hides them anyway, so it doesn't really look that tacky. And most people know that you have a business and it's just part of marketing and not a vanity metric at all, believe me. <laughs> so I highly agree with the 30 hashtags. You also wanna make sure that you're not using hashtags that are shadow banned. Let me talk about that a little bit. So if you are using hashtags, but you're not getting, if you look at your analytics and the insights and you're not getting views on your post from hashtags, if you don't see any and you used hashtags on a post, that means more than likely one of the hashtags on your post are shadow banned. There's not really an easy way <laughs> to find all shadow banned hashtags, but you can Google what are some banned hashtags. And one of the banned hashtags is beauty blogger, but beauty bloggers, plural with an S, is not. And so that might be one of the hashtags. It's actually not one that you should use, but I'll tell you that <laughs> why in a minute. But there are shadow banned hashtags that you should not be using. So you can Google kind of a list of those just to be aware, but also you can look up these hashtags, which I recommend to do the research on and look to see if there are any recent posts and how recent are the posts. So not the top posts, those will show, but the recent post. And if it's within a few hours, then that is a relevant hashtag that you can use. Also, sometimes Instagram will say, hey, this hashtag has been banned for, you know, however many days. Why this happens is because there's just some evil out there in the world. There's some spammy people. There are some bots. There is inappropriate content that gets put on to some of these hashtags. So some of these hackers and um, I won't even go into detail of all the evil that can be out there, but if they know that a hashtag is really popular, they are gonna put some not so okay content on there just to get views and try to hook people in. And so that is one of the reasons it gets banned. Another reason is if somebody reports a hashtag or reports a couple posts from a hashtag, then Instagram is gonna block those posts and that hashtag and it's really important that whenever you post, let's say you're posting a picture of a new outfit that you got and it's an Amazon fashion post and you're talking about that, you would not want to post or use a hashtag that is not relevant to that dress, to that outfit or what you are talking about. So you wouldn't want to put, for example, Merry Christmas if it's not Christmas time. That's very broad, not specific. If you have questions about that, um, feel free to find me on Voxer at Stetson K. Patton. Um, I usually answer questions on Friday, so I'll be more than happy to answer your questions. Okay, moving on from the band hashtags. Using the right hashtags. So, this is really important because I see so many people out there using Let's say I'm trying to find something that I can use. Let's see, I have lash glue sitting on my table. <laughs> so let's say that I'm doing false eyelashes for somebody and I'm a makeup artist and I'm doing the false eyelashes. I would not wanna use the hashtag, hashtag false eyelashes, if it has a ton of hashtag views. I'll have to look that up and see. But kind of the rule of thumb is, let's say you have 2,000 followers, you really want to look for a range of a hashtag that has anywhere between 20,000 likes or users using that hashtag all the way to 200,000. So 2,000 followers, 20,000 to 200. If you have 5,000, you should use anywhere between 50,000, actually 20, I would still stick with 20, but 50,000 all the way up to 500,000. I usually tell people try to stick under 300,000. I feel like that's kind of the sweet spot. And 
then you really want to narrow it down. Some of my best hashtag finds have been ones that have about that 20 to 30,000 users using it. And you can check this through Instagram itself. So if you go to the search bar, the Discover tab in Instagram, and hopefully this pulls up on my screen, I can show you, go into the Discover tab, and then searching in the hashtag that you wanna search for, and then you can see some relevant hashtags for you. And then you can see how many users are using them and you can click on it to see if it's relevant or not. All right, so if you are one of my clients, a lot of times what we will do is go through this together word by word and go ahead and pick you out some specific hashtags for your business, your location, all that jazz. I do wanna show you a couple of apps that I use. I like to use Hish Hash, Smart Hash, and Flick is a new one that's out. I'm still playing around with that one. Hish Hash is free and I really, really like it. It kinda does the counting for you. And so again, you can just copy and paste them really easily, put them on your post or your comment, and you can discover all of the users that are using it. So if you have questions about those apps, again, send me a message on Instagram at Stats and K Patton or a Voxer message at the same name. Okay. All right, last but not, oh, no, 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 no. Still on five, <laughs> still on using the hashtags. So with that amount, you have 30 hashtags to use. I kind of like to split them up into categories and subcategories. So let's say you were doing the false eyelashes, but you're doing that because you are a Charlotte, North Carolina makeup artist. So that could be a hashtag that you use, Charlotte, North Carolina, CLT, CLTNC, CLT, which is the airport code for Charlotte, <laughs> CLT, lashes, CLT brides, you can look all of that information up and kind of write those hashtags down for you. Here is what a lot of people miss out on, are location hashtags. I see so many people who don't put their location and guess what? If businesses in your location are finding you and your business, guess what? They might consider you an expert in your business and refer you to people. So I think that is a really key ingredient that people miss out on hashtags is their location specific hashtags. I do live in Charlotte, North Carolina. I use CLTNC all the time and CLT businesses all the time because not a lot of people are really using those or utilizing that right now. And it's a good one to use and I've definitely have gotten discovered from that hashtag. You could also hashtag um, a slogan that your state or town has, something like that. Another key thing that I see people making the mistake of is using the hashtag that is their competition, I would say. So I was working with a client the other night and she already is a hashtag boss babe, which don't use that one, overused, but hashtag work from home mom boss. Let's say that's one of the hashtags that she's using. She is really trying to draw people into her business. She's looking for other moms to work on her team. She is looking for moms who want to work from home. So using a hashtag that's a hashtag work from home mom boss, it might be like one good one, but you wouldn't want to use a ton of that because you're the women using that hashtag are women who already work from home and have a business. So what you would want to do instead, and this is a key ingredient in part of my hunting for hashtags um, training that I do in a lot of my consultations, is you want to go to your target audience or somebody's page that you would want as your ideal customer, your ideal person that you would either want on your team or want as a customer buying your product then what you're gonna do is either one, go to who they're following and see if they're following any hashtags, and those might be some good ideas for hashtags you should use, or two, see what hashtags they are using on their post. For example, um, one of the clients I was working with the other day, she is 
(laughs) working her mom boss business or work from home business. And we talked about how a lot of moms go to Chick-fil-A. And so we kind of stalked the Chick-fil-A hashtag and post and kind of looked to see what some of these women were using in their hashtags. And that gave her a really good, vivid, kind of clear picture of what her ideal customer is using in the hashtags and not what her competition is using in the hashtags. You still kind of want to scout both of them out, but you're going to get more results if you're being found by the hashtags that your ideal customer is using. Okay, last but not least, we are on number six for my hunting for hashtags quick preview is using geotags and also tagging other people. If you're not using geotags, and I know these don't really have anything to do with hashtags, but they still go with tags, the tagging feature on Instagram. So geotags are tagging your location. So one of my favorite coffee shops here in Charlotte is called Amelie's. It is a French cafe, bakery, coffee shop, all the things, and I love it. The people going to that coffee shop are an ideal clientele for me. And so I love looking at that geotag in the discover. So if you go to the magnifying glass again, go to discover um, that location, you can look to see who all has tagged that location. These are also really good target audience people. And then again, you can look to see what hashtags they are using and location hashtags, and then maybe write those down on your hashtag list for you to use. Also, tagging people in your post. So this is a little touchy subject for me because I'm not sure if it's a tactic being taught right now, um, but I have been recently getting tagged in a lot of people's posts when they post. This is an engagement tactic. So the people tagging me, I love them. They are friends and I love their business and want to support them best I can, but I'm not in the picture and they're also not talking about me. So really I feel like they're just tagging me for an engagement purpose. They want me to come to their page fast and let's say they're tagging 20 people. Well, all 20 people, if they come to their page really fast, are gonna engage and comment like hopefully and that will push their post out in the Instagram algorithm more. This is good for fast quick engagement if that's what you want to do. It does work but also I disagree with it. I think it can be a little tacky and a little more like a vanity metric and so you kind of want that organic growth. I only like to tag people if they are actually in the post, either physically or I'm talking about their testimonial or a story. So one of my clients who was tagging me in a lot of his posts, we had a really good conversation about it. And he said that it really had helped boost his engagement and get more followers, but he doesn't really need more followers right now. He's got a waiting list of clients. And so It really didn't make sense for him to do it because he already is getting organic growth and engagement. So I say that you can choose what type of tags you want to do. Do you want that quick, fast engagement? I think it works out better if you are telling a testimonial or something of maybe even 10 customers, and then you can tag them in it. For example, I did a post the other day of 10 of my favorite businesses for either hair or shopping or lash extensions and I was able to tag them but hopefully it's a really good educational post for people it's not just a hey look at me please like my post please comment on my post sort of post and you don't want to ever come across that way because even though it gets you engagement quick at the beginning It's not gonna be long lasting because honestly, I thought about unfollowing some of these people because I'm getting tired of getting tagged because I get all the notifications anytime somebody comments. And you can remove the tag, but then it also notifies the person that you've removed the tag and then you feel kind of icky and bad about it anyway. So it really is up to you which hashtags you wanna use, who you wanna tag, where you wanna tag, and how you use this as a lead generation method because that's really what it is. It's a great way to get leads to come to you without having to be spammy in DMs 
without having to cold call people, without having to send that, hey, hun, haven't talked to you in years message, which none of us like. I've seriously got one this morning and rolled my eyes at it. So <laughs> I hope this helped with hunting for hashtags. I am going to be launching a series this spring called The Social Safari. It is going to be a six weeks training course where I go live once a week and you get videos in your inbox every week with trainings and we are going to go over specific hashtags where you get to ask me live questions and answers and we do a research for the hashtags for you. So if you are interested in the social safari, go ahead and sign up for the email that I'm going to be sending you and let's get those hashtags hunted. Have a good day. Thanks for joining me.